Fully automatic espresso machines are kind of a luxury. They're expensive and they can take up a lot of space, but that may be a small price to pay for the equivalent of getting a barista at your service every day. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com and I recently bought the Philips 4300 series fully automatic coffee machine with Latte Go to test out and see whether it is worth the splurge. In this review, I'll tell you what kind of drinks it makes and I'll show you the quality. I'll talk about how they taste, what the cleanup is like, and how this newer version compares to the previous generation Philips 3200 series that I reviewed last year. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful to please hit that like button and consider becoming a subscriber. Both those things help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there gets to watch, enjoy, and learn from. So what is an automatic espresso machine? Fully automatic espresso machines do all the work of making espresso for you. They will grind the beans, they'll tamp down the grounds, heat the water, and then extract the espresso under high pressure. They will also clean themselves and give you automatic feedback and instructions. It essentially takes all the work out of enjoying espresso or espresso-based drinks. These machines don't use pods, don't use pods or plastic cups. You get fresh ground espresso from exactly the coffee beans that you choose to use, and your coffee is made fresh at the moment. Many automatic espresso machines will also have some kind of milk heating or frothing ability. Some use a traditional wand steamer, while others have containers and tubes that will do everything automatically. As I noted, these machines can be very expensive. The Jura lineup, for example, can set you back about $2,000 for one machine, and that's probably on the low side. This Philips machine, by comparison, costs about $899 US or about $1,000 Canadian. I'll get to the details on the espresso in just a sec, but I first want to touch on one of the key components of this machine, and that's what's called the Latte Go Milk System. The system is basically just a special container that you fill with milk, snap it into place, and then let it do its work. The Latte Go Frother will mix milk and air at high speed in the chamber, then pours the hot milk right into your cup at just the right temperature, says Phillips. The container is made up of three parts now, the lid, the clear cup, and a bracket. And the 3200 model had just two parts, that was the lid and the cup. Phillips says it's designed with minimal tubes and minimal small parts to make it easy to clean. You can rinse it under hot water for a quick clean or toss it in the dishwasher. The milk container is easy to use, though I am a bit puzzled about why it has been redesigned to have more parts. Now with the cup and bracket, if you don't click them together tightly, milk will spill from a small hole in the bottom of the cup. Weird, yes, and I did actually get milk everywhere and that's how I know this will spill. Even so, the Latte Go system is actually really easy to use and quick to clean up. Coffee lovers all have their favorites, and the Philips 4300 with Latte Go is designed to make the core beverages at the touch of a single button. This version of the machine will make eight different drinks. Espresso, cappuccino, coffee, ristretto, latte macchiato, cafe au lait, americano, and cafe crema. It will also dispense hot water or just do steamed milk. The 3200, by the way, made just five drinks. Those were black coffee, espresso, americano, cappuccino, and latte macchiato. To make a drink, choose your beverage from the control panel and then press start. We're going to start here with an espresso. Now you can customize your drink if you want a stronger shot or a longer shot. You can tell the machine to add more water. You can also have it make a true double shot. The machine will then grind the beans and make your espresso on the spot. To brew one shot of espresso from start to finish, it takes about 30 seconds. For a double, it's about one minute. Your espresso will have a lot to do with which beans you're using, but for me, my espresso was great. The shots brewed up really fast, and I love that the double shots were perfect doubles, not just long shots. The espresso came out hot and creamy with a nice crema on top, and I was actually really impressed with its overall quality. So to test this out, I tried making a few different drinks on this machine. Double espressos are generally my daily go-to, but I also tried out things like latte, cafe au lait, and the latte macchiato, as well as cappuccino. When you turn the machine on, it will heat up and automatically rinse the machine if it's needed without you needing to press any additional buttons. The cappuccino I tried was a significant improvement over the last Philips automatic machine I tried. The foam was actually good quality and fluffy, and the machine seems to be able to measure and dispense its own milk now, unlike the 3400 version, which relied on you filling the milk container with the proper amount of milk. I also tried making cafe au lait, which is supposed to be strong coffee and milk. 
The coffee was kind of weak and watery to me, so I made it over manually with an extra water double espresso, and that was actually much better. The nice thing about this machine is you can do that. You can customize your drinks the way you like them. Moving on to try a latte macchiato. This was actually a really nice drink too. Great layering, nice thick milky foam and overall a really well balanced drink. I think I'm gonna be adding this one to my afternoon coffee routine. I was impressed to see this machine has a ceramic burr grinder built in. I bought a dedicated ceramic burr grinder a few years ago when I was making manual espressos and I can tell you they are expensive but worth every penny thanks to their durability and the precision of the grind you can get. On the machine, you can adjust the grind to one of 12 settings from coarse to fine. You do need to do this while it's grinding and it takes a drink or two to have full effect. The large beans hopper can easily hold a pound of coffee and it actually seals up well too to keep the beans from getting stale. Worth noting as well is that you can also use pre-ground coffee to make regular coffee or espresso. I actually tried using pre-ground espresso and it is quick and easy to use. Just pour a spoonful of ground espresso into the little bin. Then you do need to adjust your setting so the machine knows to pull from the ground coffee. It's easy enough to switch the setting and a great shot comes out in seconds. Another impressive feature is the large water tank, which holds a ton of water. A filter can also be inserted into the machine to cut down on the need for descaling or if you have crappy tasting water. The drink spout on this machine is also height adjustable to create room for a variety of coffee or espresso cups. The Philips 4300, like the 3200, lets you adjust your coffee temperature. Now, while you can't give it a precise temperature, you can choose between low, medium, or high. The machine is set to medium by default, and that brews espresso at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, a hot but drinkable temperature. Now, unfortunately, you don't get to adjust the temperature for the coffee and the milk separately. You're getting an overall feeling here, but at least you have some room to adjust. Changing the temperature is a little easier than in the 3200 too. It is just a couple of clicks on the settings menu. With just a handful of parts, the Philips here is super easy to keep clean. The grounds bin and the water tray will slide out and you can rinse them quickly or toss them in the dishwasher if they need a bit of a larger scrub. The grounds bin seemed to me that it didn't need emptying very often at all, maybe about once a week in my use, which was nice. The machine will also apparently brew up to 5,000 cups of coffee without needing to descale it, and the machine should tell you when it's time for that. This machine also has what's called a removable brew group, and that is just a fancy word for the mechanics that actually make your espresso. You'll access the brew group through a door in the back of the water tank, and Philips recommends you clean it about once a week or so. You can really just clean it by giving it a quick rinse in water. Overall, this machine is a bit smarter than previous versions, and it makes a few more drinks too. The espresso quality is outstanding, and the machine is so easy to use and to clean. It's got a huge water tank and a smaller footprint than some other fully automatic espresso machines I've tried. I love that it has a ceramic burr grinder and that the brew group is removable and cleans easily under running water. Now ditto for the Latte Go container, which also cleans up well and couldn't be easier to use. Now compared to something like a Nespresso by comparison, there are no pods you'll have to worry about recycling either. Downsides? Honestly, I am struggling to find something about this machine that I didn't like. I suppose it could be the size, it is a bit on the big side, so you need the counter real estate for it. It could also be the price. While it is expensive at about $8.99 US or $1,049 Canadian, that price is actually substantially more affordable than a lot of other similar super automatic espresso machines. I can definitely recommend the Philips 4300 Latte Go if you are in the market for a fully automatic espresso machine that can do a lot more. If you want to read this review or reference any of what I've talked about here, you can head over to techgadgetscanada.com for a full write-up. There you can ask me any questions you have about this machine. You can also post them here in comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always reach me through Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.